Okay, so today we're going to be talking about 7.3, which is going to be discovering reference angles. Uh, it's not just going to be about reference angles, it's going to be how we use them in solving trigonometric um, equations and how we use them in inverse um, trig functions. So, let's get started. Uh, let's start with the definition. So, a reference angle, uh, we denote this by theta sub r, so theta little r, of an angle, theta, is the acute angle created between the terminal side and the x-axis. So remember that an acute angle has to be a positive angle, and it also has to be between 0 and 90 degrees, okay? And it's the terminal side created between the x-axis. So, for example, we have our original angle here, which is theta. So then our acute angle would be this angle created right here between the x-axis and the terminal side. Now notice that I didn't, for example, draw the angle from this x-axis here. Okay, and the reason being because that angle is not acute. Okay, the same reason I didn't draw it from here over because that angle isn't acute. So we're trying to create an acute angle from the x-axis to the terminating side of that angle. Okay, we can also see another example down here. This is the original angle. And then we have our reference angle right here, little theta r. Okay, and this time we're using the positive side of the x-axis. Again, that's because that's creating an acute angle. Had we used, say, for example, this side, we had gone something like this, then that would not have been an acute angle. Okay. So, like most things, it's best to get comfortable with some examples. So, for example, on your own, go ahead and feel free to pause the video at any time and try these on your own. All right, so let's find the reference angle for the following thetas. Okay, so I'm going to do these in a different color. Let's do green. Okay, so let's see. Here's the terminating side and the x-axis. Right, so the acute angle I can create between the x-axis and the terminating side would be right here. So this would be my theta r. So in this case, my theta r would be the same thing as my theta. And that's okay. Because I already have a positive acute angle, so they're going to be the same. All right, let's look at the next one. All right, so theta is 2 pi over 3. All right, so here's my terminating sign. So if I went from this x-axis this way, it would not have an acute angle. Same thing if I went this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the terminating side and stop at this x-axis. And that will give me my theta r. Right now to calculate theta r, I know that all the way from this x-axis, from the positive to the negative x-axis, is 180 degrees. So this is 0 degrees, or 0 radians. This is pi over 2, or 90 degrees. Okay, and all the way over here is 180 degrees, or pi. Okay, so if all of this is pi, all right, and I only went 2 pi over 3 of the way, then this is what's going to be left over. So that means that my theta r is going to be pi minus 2 pi over 3. And that's going to give me pi over 3. All right, let's move on to the next one. And so this one is negative 55 degrees. Okay, so here's my terminating side. And I can create an acute angle from here to this x-axis. Notice that my arrow is going in the positive direction as it did for all of the examples before it, going in a positive direction. So the angles are going to have the same size, but this theta r 
is going to be positive now. So it's going in the positive direction. So this theta r is now positive 55 degrees. Because direction matters on these guys. Alright, let's do one more example. Okay, so let's do negative 3 pi over 4. Alright, so from the terminating side to the x-axis, this would be an acute angle here. So let's draw that out. B theta r. Again, if I drew it from any other side of the x-axis or went any other way, I would not have an acute angle. So we're kind of stuck. Alright, now again, I know that the whole distance from this side of the x-axis to this side is pi. Okay, so from right here all the way over is pi. I know that my original theta, negative 3 pi over 4, already takes that up. Okay, so my theta r is going to be pi minus, I'm going to do the absolute value of that so that I can find this positive angle here. Okay, minus the absolute value of 3 pi over 4 which is going to give me positive pi over 4. Now how had I subtracted the negative? Then my answer would have been 5 pi over 4, which is not an acute angle. So it would not have been a reference angle by definition. Okay. Now on your own, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can come up with a general way to find theta r if our original theta is between 0 and 360 degrees, okay? A little hint is to cut up your rules by what quadrant your angle terminates in. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and do that. All right. <coughs> so here are the rules that I came up with. So if our angle terminates in the first quadrant, then it's already a positive acute angle. So our reference angle is the same as our original angle. Okay, so theta r is the same as theta. All right, now if it terminates in the second quadrant over here, then our reference angle, theta r, is going to be 180 minus theta. Remember, because the total direction is going to be 180 from one x-axis to another. Okay, so we're finding the difference between that total angle of 180 in our original angle. We terminate in quadrant 3. Then our new angle is going to be 180 plus our little reference angle here. Okay, So our original angle, theta, would have been 180 degrees plus the reference angle. As you can see here, we're adding that little blue part. So to find theta r, we would just subtract 180 from both sides, and that's how we get this formula, which is theta r equals theta minus 180. And finally, if we terminate in the fourth quadrant, okay, we would do 360, which is all the way around, okay, minus the original angle, which we don't want, to get the remaining theta r or our reference angle right here. Okay, so these are some rules to keep handy. I would definitely put them on a note sheet for the next, next exam, and we're gonna be working with them in class when we do our next activity.